What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in the last video we created this uh, 2D platformer style game for just getting started. Now in this one we're going to finish it off by basically allowing you to um, get scores. We're going to add in a collectible you can collect. We're going to add in UI and we're also going to add in an end game scene so once you've completed the game you can actually get started. So let's just uh, close this and let's get back into making it. So the first thing we're going to do is create the actual collect we want so we're going to go back into our um, collectible here and we're going to steal the character hand green for our character so let's create a new scene we're going to create a 2d a 2d node and that was accidental so i'm just going to change this type to be a static body 2d then we're going to go drop back in our actual hand shape here and there we go next up what we want to do is add a new and we're going to add in a collision shape 2d and we're going to choose the circle shape so you can see here that's the circle let's just up its range radius by dropping this down and making it sound like 15 maybe even 16 pixels and that looks about right now we can drag this above this to hide it behind the actual um sprite there and then we can save this scene actually let's rename this to be our collectible uh save this scene and save it as collectible now we want to add a script to this to give it a value and also a function to remove it once it's been collected so to do that we're just going to click up here on attach a script we'll call it collectible.gd and we can leave the rest of this and hit create now if we head over to our script close this and actually open if we actually open our script here you'll see we are extending a static body 2d and we have some basic values here so what we want to do is just remove these uh, values and we're just going to add in an export file called the value which we're going to set equal to 10. we'll then create a function called collect where we will just use the q free which will just remove the um collectible from the scene it basically deletes it removes it out of the scene it's no longer being kept and then obviously we'll use this value later on to actually get it once we collect it in the player script so if we click on player you should see it should open up our player gd script and going down here underneath the handle movement script we're going to want a new signal so we need to add in so if we go back to 2d scene here we want to add in an area 2d an area 2d tells you once something enters the area so we're going to create a new child node and search for area 2d now this is going to have a little warning saying it also needs a collision shape so all we're going to do is copy our collision shape and paste it inside of here and and that will work fine however we need to change the layer the collision is on otherwise we won't actually be able to walk into the collectible instead we will just be um, walking against it so we want to swap the layer to uh, layer 2 and the mask to 2 as well and this will basically allow us to um, collect the item so let's just save that and then go to node and signals and go to area and what we want is body entered 2d so what we want to do is connect this to our player script and click connect and now as you'll see inside of our uh, in our script our player script you'll see we have our on area 2d being created which is passing through the body of what we walk into so what we want to do is we want to check if body dot is in group and we're gonna i'm gonna show you how to add a group soon we're gonna say collect then what we're going to do is we are going to say current level so we're going to say body dot collect to call the function now we need to actually go back to our collectible and click on our inspector and what we want to do is get our collision and make sure it's also set to the uh, second layer here so this will be the layer we uh, mess or collide with the actual collectible and then what we want to do is go over to node and we want to add in a node group and we are going to call this collectible add it to this and that should now be working so if we go back to our level scene we should be able to grab our collectible and drop this in wherever we see we can duplicate this and move them around duplicate this one and pull it up there and there you go you see we now have three collectibles now if everything is working we should be able to hit play and actually be able to collect 
you can see they actually disappear once we collect them and there you go now we need to actually add in our score ui and actually get the value from it to so what we want to do is on our level we are going to actually attach a script to this now if we select this we can just call it level.gd you can see it inherits all from node uh, 2d and again we can delete everything in here and we can just do at on ready we are going to get a variable called ui which is equal to percent ui now this won't exist yet because we haven't actually set up a um, unique name for our ui we haven't even created our ui yet but this is basically going to call a function inside of our ui that will um well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a UI and then we're going to get a function to update the score. So let's just save this. This will do nothing right now. But back in our main game, what we want to do is add in a new child and we are going to get a canvas, a canvas layer here. Double click that and that will add in a new canvas layer. Sorry, that was supposed to be a new scene. So let's try that again. Let's create a new one. Let's click other and let's just go for the canvas layer there cool now we can rename this to ui and then we want to add a control node to this so a control node is a canvas item which allows you to tell it how big you want it and as you can see here at the top here we can select a preset and what a, a, a preset which we want the full rect so this will stretch it out to match the full screen i then want to add a new child and i'm just going to get the margin container here and i'm going to also set its preset to full rect but with the margin container we can go to theme overrides and constant and we can turn on all of this and give it a slight spacing so it's not all stuck to one area and i'm just going to add 32 to each of these so it sits 32 pixels in we then want to add a new uh, label node um, which I'm just going to add in here score zero, which you can see there. Now we want this to be stuck to the left and top right. So the top left, sorry, top left of the um, screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new label settings, drop this down and go to font and up the size to something like 24. So it's a bit bigger. I then want to right click this and go to access as unique name. Now what that's going to do is allow us to be able to access this in a parent script by just the name label without having to actually find the path for it. So on our UI, we're going to attach a new script called UI and hit create. Now up here, we can give this a class name, although it's not necessary. I'm just going to call this class name off UI. And then I'm going to set on ready. We want to get our score label and sell it equal to. And we can just drag in this label and you'll see it use the percentage sign to actually get it. If we also drag in the margin container, you'll see it actually does the path. But with a unique name, it will allow you to access it directly like this. I then want to create a score variable and we're going to have a max score variable which will be equal to 30 because we're going to have three objects which give you 10 points each. And then we want a function here called update score where we pass in a new value and we can say score is plus equal to the value and then we want to create a new a new method called update score label which we'll create down here. And here we're just going to say score label dot text is equal to score plus and then we can do str to confer a integer or a number to a string and we are going to pass in score hit save and we can save this as ui dot uh, now we should be able to go back to our main game scene and actually drag in our ui scene and then on our level script this is where we actually want to tell it that we need a function called update UI score. We're going to pass in the value and we're just going to say UI dot update score and we're going to pass in that value. So that will be using the update score here method. Now we need to reference the actual level here inside of our player script. What we want to do is actually get reference to our level. So below all this, I can say export far and I'm going to say current level and this will be a node 2D. Then we can get our current level and go back in here and we can say current level dot update pass in update ui score and pass in the body dot value which is going to get us the value of our script 
And we can actually do this before we call body.collect because this will delete the body once we actually collect it. Now, if we hit run, we should be able to collect. So you can see here we actually have an error and that's because I forgot to reference the level on our player. So what we want to do is come back to level. We want to go down to our player and where you see current level, we need to assign our level. That will assign it to this so we can actually reference the level script. Hit save and we can stop and rerun this. And also, I've done one more thing wrong. This UI currently isn't being referenced. So if we go to our game and we go to 2D here, you can see our level. What we need to do is also make this an access as unique name. So we're able to access it inside of our level. And there you go. You can see our score goes up and there you go. Once we get to 30, it doesn't actually do anything yet, but we need to actually add in an end screen where we can uh, say we've completed the level. So back to our UI, we want to close this and we can call this in game UI. And then what we want to do is create a new margin container which we will have the same overrides for we can rename this to be our game complete ui save this and what we want to do is anchor this in full screen as again now i want to create a texture rec to this to give us a background so we're going to add in a texture rec and we are just going to give this a canvas texture which will just be a plain texture and what we're going to do is go down to visibility and where it says modulate we are just going to change this to black and drop the opacity to something like 128 to give it that sort of a transparent feel to it then back on our game ui we're going to add a new component which we are going to call well we're going to get the h box container which is the horizontal container box which we are going to set to center center and then inside of here we want a label which is just going to say you complete you completed the, the level and we can add in a new label settings here and give this a much larger font. So like 48 looks good. Then underneath here, we're going to add a button, which is what we're going to use to actually restart our level. I've also just realized this is supposed to be a fee box container because we want it to be vertically. So we'll just go swap this to a vertical box and just rename this to fee box. And then on our button, we want to make sure it sits dead center with both here. So we're going to align it to the center and then we're just going to say replay or something like that. Play again. Then what we want to do is and what we could do with this button is go to our styles and actually apply a new, a new style box flat where we can actually change the background color to be white. We can add in some extra margin so let's just give this eight or oh sorry 16 8 16 8 and add some corner radius of 8 8 8 8 to make it slightly rounded there and back in our fee box i just want to go to theme overage constant and set this to use about 32 pixels of spacing we probably even go to 64 this just space it out a bit better now back on our button, you'll see our font color is not quite right. So what we want to do is override the font color to be black. Now, if we hit play, we should be able to see this. And you can see when I hover over it, it kind of shrinks back down to the default again, which isn't what we want. So what we're going to do is go back to styles and we are going to copy this and paste it on our huffer and our pressed. Now on our pressed, we're just going to tweak the color slightly by making it something like a a D, 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 which is just a darker gray color. So when we actually press the button, if we go back, we can actually hit click it and it, you'll see it changes the color. You also want to turn on font pressed as well and probably font huffer. This is just so it doesn't change the font color when we actually huffer or click it. And there you go. That's much better. Now we want to make the game complete UI a access as a unique name so because we are going to access this in our script. We also want to make it hidden by default. Now going back into our script, we just want to do a check for our um, after we've updated our label. We want to say if score is greater than or equal to our max score, then we have actually well. So this should be in that it can just be like that. And we just want to say, we want to get an on ready, like we did before, at on ready for a completed UI is equal to, and we can drag in the completed UI here. 
and say completed UI dot fissible is equal to true. And then we can also say our score label dot fissible is equal to false because we don't want to see that behind it. We then want to get our button and go to our node and signals and we want to get on pressed. We want to connect this to our UI to get this function here. We then want to say get tree dot reload current scene and that is means once we click it it's just going to refresh the page so we can actually play the game again so now let's hit play and see how i think it's working so you can see our score is at the top left still we can get our objects and when we get the final one you can see the you completed the level and we can hit play again and we can restart the game and there you go that is everything we're going to cover in this series if you want to see more then please let me know down below this has been a fun one to actually make um and the ui is pretty cool i also have heard your comments about doing it in c sharp and i will definitely be releasing some c sharp content on the channel i've only just been learning how to actually get it working with visual studio code which is nice because then we also get IntelliSense. So I will um, do a rundown on that at some point as well in C Sharp for all the Unity devs coming or yeah, Unity devs coming over to Godot. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. And if you want the source code for this, you can get it on my Patreon. It helps support the channel and you also get access to all the previous tutorials I've done source code on this channel. So check out the link in the description if you want access to that as well. And that's going to be it for this video so peace out